few days ago, the Wall Street Journal published an article about Apple iMessage, the default messaging platform for iPhone users. The article claims that teenagers dread the green bubble that's displayed on an iPhone whenever a message is sent to an Android user. This has caused an enormous controversy on the internet and between several companies like Apple and Google. So in this video, we'll take a look at why the messaging service has suddenly become so controversial and what the outcome could be for the entire smartphone industry. To understand some of the controversy, we need to know some information about iMessage. It's Apple's internet-based messaging service that includes features like the typing indicator, reactions, and red receipts. iMessage has always been exclusive to the iPhone and other Apple products, meaning there is no Android equivalent for one of the largest messaging services in the United States. iMessage holds 17% market share, making it the third largest in the country. The key to this wide adoption of the platform has been seamless integration with iPhones. It's turned on by default for all iPhone users and activates automatically when you're sending a message to another iPhone. But this is where the controversy starts. Let's say you're texting a number that is not an iPhone. Well, as soon as you send a message, the bubble will turn green so that the iPhone user is aware that they're sending a regular SMS message. While this might seem simple, it's actually very complicated on a social level. According to reports from the Wall Street Journal, some teenagers with Android phones have been bullied by iPhone users for triggering the green bubble. The article claims that some people have been pressured into switching to iMessage when asked questions like, who's green, that make them feel terrible because of their device. So now that we understand the apparent problem, let's take a look at what Apple and companies like Google have said about the issue. Google Senior Vice President Hiroshi Lockheimer said in a tweet that, quote, Apple's iMessage lock-in is a documented strategy. Using peer pressure and bullying as a way to sell products is disingenuous for a company that has humanity and equity as a core part of its marketing. The standards exist today to fix this. And while I do agree that bullying should never be a marketing strategy, I think Lockheimer is overreaching to claim that the standards exist today to fix this. He's referring to a technology called the RCS standard, which allows for most of the internet-based features of iMessage to work through traditional text messages on both iPhones and Androids. However, RCS is not in a position to be used widely today. Most Android phones are not being released with the technology in mind, and as a result, it's extremely uncommon. So even if RCS won't be an option, why wouldn't Apple just develop an iMessage app for Android? After all, Google offers almost all of its apps on iOS, so it seems like an iMessage app would make sense. And while this is inevitably what most people will say they want, Apple has a few reasons for not letting Android phones use iMessage. First, because iMessage is exclusive to the Apple ecosystem, it's a major selling point for Apple, and provides another reason for people to buy iPhones. If a customer wants to use iMessage, they have to buy an iPhone first, generating more revenue for the company. However, this isn't the only reason. Apple also has security to think about. Android is a much less protected operating system, open to many third-party companies that leave the devices vulnerable to piracy and viruses. Android phones are also much less private, as companies like Google frequently track the user across the platform to deliver targeted advertising, as well as to sell that user's data. Opening up iMessage would mean dealing with all of these issues, and it's likely that Apple does not want to deal with them. Finally, it's important to realize that sometimes a service or product is just better than the competition. I happen to think that this is the case with iMessage, as it provides a great user experience and activates automatically. If Android users want to use it as well, it's entirely possible to purchase an older generation iPhone 7 or 8 for a comparable price to their existing phone. And I think that's the primary change we'll see going forward. The people who actually want to use iMessage will switch to iPhones. After all, everyone has a choice on what type of phone to purchase, and if Apple is offering a superior choice in that person's opinion, then they are free to buy iPhones instead. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I am just starting out on YouTube, so if you want to see more videos, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe. It would really help me out. So happy late new year, and I'll see you in the next video.